Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to check out my Instagram listed down below. I post a lot of really fun stuff over there. We have fun in the stories and I post some exclusive tutorials over there as well. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to put some water slide decals onto a ceramic mug. This is a super fun and easy craft that you can do, and you don't even necessarily need a Cricut to do it. I'm going to show you how to use the Cricut, but as long as you have a pair of scissors and a printer, you can do this. We're going to seal this and everything so I can show you how to do it. So what you're going to need is some water slide paper. I use Hayes water slide paper and you can save 15% on their website by going to the link below and using code Corinne. Also, I will recommend using some sort of a clear spray. I use this Rust-Oleum Triple Clear. It's really good. You can get it at any hardware store for about 4 or $5, depending on where you're from. And this stuff lasts forever. I've had this can for a really long time and it's still pretty full. And then obviously you'll need a ceramic mug. You don't need anything special with your ceramic mug. This is just a mug from the Dollar Tree. So these are a great way to like dress up these really inexpensive mugs. So let's get started. We're going to do some decals for a ceramic mug. And I'm going to show you how to seal this without using epoxy. And it's really easy. So I've got a couple of images I've already loaded, but I'll show you guys how to load an image. Click upload and then click upload image. Browse and find whatever image you want to put into your design. I'll just use this bell that I have right here. It should work fine. I choose complex and click continue. Now for her, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of the background just so we can see what that looks like. Click continue and you want to save her as a print and cut image. Click upload. And then once it opens up over here into your recent uploads, select the image and click insert images. Now this is kind of a small cup, so I've only got about two inches wide to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and size her down so she's just a little under two inches. That's perfectly fine. Now I am going to put this Arendale Brewing Company one on because I kind of like this one better. But I like to make sure I don't waste any of my paper when I'm doing this. So I'll make extra decals just to use for other things. So what I'm going to do first is open up a shape and open up a square. Our page is eight and a half by 11, but Cricut Design Space can only cut 6.75 by 9.25 for a print and cut project. So what I'm going to do is down here in the lower left hand corner, click the unlock button. I want to make it 6.75 wide and I want to make it 9.25 high. That is our printable area for Design Space. Right click on the square and click send to back. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my images into my square. Like I said, I don't like to waste material. So I'll make lots of different little water slide stickers and decals while we do this. That way we can just kind of fit a lot on one sheet and we're not going to waste. Now I am going to make this so it goes on both sides. So I'm just going to duplicate that and I'll make two of these. Now I'm going to just go into my uploaded images and find some recently uploaded print and cut type images that I can use to make some more water slide decals. You can kind of use whatever you like and whatever works for you. I kind of like him better and just scroll through, find whatever kind of designs you want to work with and just play around with it. It's really fun. I'll do a couple of these little ice creams. I've got some more of those princesses, but I think I'll skip them for now. There's lots that you can do with these and you can even print out pictures of your pets and things, but you can just sort of play around and see what you like and what makes you happy. So I'll just add a few of these print and cut items. Once I have all the images selected that I would like, just click insert images. It may take a moment to insert all of your images, especially if you selected quite a few and some of them are larger, but just give design space a couple moments and it will insert what you want. Once it's done that, you can resize all of your designs so that they fit on your sheet. And you can kind of decide how big you want them based on where you want to put them or what you want to put them on. Now, I was thinking about doing these little Lion King ones on a tumbler, So I'm going to go ahead and cut them out, but I don't necessarily need them right now. But they would be fun to do. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these little guys out just for fun. I'm going to make Pumbaa a little bit bigger because I feel like he should be bigger. I'm going to move Simba over. Whoops. If you do something like that where you accidentally delete somebody, just click undo and then you can just 
move things around. Now the ice cream is huge, so I'm just gonna size it down real quick just to two inches just to get them out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. We may not actually end up putting those on here, but I figured I would add them just in case. Now a quick trick that you can do is see how my Lion King has lots of like little small spots that are gonna cut. I wanna add an offset to these guys so that they actually will have a little bit thicker lines so that they're not gonna cut so funky. I love this little dino. I gotta figure out how to squish him in there because he's so cute. I should be able to squeeze him in. I just need to kind of move things around a little bit more. And you can turn stuff if you want to. Like if I turn Timon like this way, he'll fit better and then I can probably squeeze this dinosaur in. And she's a lot bigger than he is, so I probably wanna size her down. You know, all those things. We can definitely scooch things around. But I do wanna add an offset to my Lion King stuff. So what I'm gonna do is let's start with Pumbaa. And what I wanna do is up here at the top, click offset. And I just wanna do a very, very small offset. So I'm gonna see what a 0.1 offset looks like on him. And I may even wanna go a little bit smaller to like a point. I don't know why that just happened. Well, let's undo. I'm not sure what happened when I hit backwards. Oh well, it happens. So let's try like a 0.05 and see if that's a little bit better. 0.05 is perfect. Now I'm gonna do that to each of my Lion King figures and it does remember what size you set the offset to. So just go ahead and do that to all of the figures that you want a small offset on. This way when it cuts, it doesn't cut such small lines. It's just a little bit easier for design space to handle. Everybody else should be fine, but I did wanna do this to the Lion King characters. Now I wanna make sure that I change my offset color to white, that way it doesn't print because it's important to remember that um, your printer doesn't have white ink. So if you're putting this on something, keep in mind anything that's white will actually be clear. This is something that's really, really important to keep in mind. So now that I've gotten those all where I want them, what I need to do is flatten the offset to the character. So just go through each of your characters and click flatten. But once you've got all of your offsets flattened, you can get rid of this square in the back. We don't need it. You can just delete it. Select all of your characters and click Attach. That's gonna tell Cricut Design Space not to move anything and keep everything where you have it. Now before I click Make It, I'm gonna save this because we're gonna to need to seal these stickers before we cut them out. It works a lot better if you do it that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to call these, um, let's call them coffee cup stickers. And I'm gonna actually just put some spaces in there. Um, and I'm gonna save them into my stickers collection and click Save. I do this again just so that I can come back and I'll show you exactly why, but this way it'll cut in the same order that we already have it set to. Now what I wanna do is click make it and it's gonna bring us up a screen that's gonna show us our print then cut images. It may take a moment, print then cut is a little hard for Cricut Design Space. So once it has this, it shows you exactly everything that's gonna print then cut and I always just do a double check to make sure that everything has enough space around it and it looks good. Click continue. And what you're going to do now is click the words send to printer. This is gonna bring up a printer setup box here and you can tell it how many copies you want to print, what printer you wanna print on, adding bleed and using system dialog. Now this has my sublimation printer selected and I wanna make sure I'm using my regular inkjet printer with these. Your water slide paper is with inkjet printers. I'm going to leave bleed on because that's gonna give us a little bit of a leeway around all of our little creatures and I wanna turn on my system dialog. What that's gonna do is bring up a dialog box that's gonna allow you to change your printer settings. So click print and wait for your system dialog box to open. Once the box opens, click preferences, and there's a few things that you can change. Because I have an Epson, it does have fast mode, so we are gonna turn that off. Go into more options and turn off the high speed print. In the main options, you can change your quality print to high. I don't ever have to change my paper. It seems to work fine on all of that. And click OK. Now make sure you have your water slide paper loaded into your printer and click print. It's important to seal your water slide paper. So I spray mine with Rust-Oleum Triple Thick. Just give it about three sprays worth and you're good to go. Just make sure that you spray in different directions three separate times and that will seal in your color. Once your clear coat has dried, you can go ahead and cut this on your machine. I cut on a medium cardstock setting because I wanted to make sure that it cuts all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably turn off this overhead light so that you guys can see the light better, 
but it's going to turn a light on in between the cradle. It's going to read the top, the side, and the bottom lines, and then it will cut out. Before I unload my mat, I do check to make sure that it cut through. It did, so we're good. We can go ahead and unload our mat. I'm gonna slide the machine out of the way. And what I'm gonna do is flip my mat upside down and I'm gonna roll my paper off of the mat. This is a really simple process. Just rolling it off is gonna help keep it from getting curled up, which you definitely do not want. You wanna keep it as flat as you can. So I'm just kind of peeling them gently off the mat while rolling the mat off. I'm gonna put the mat to the side. And this you can just throw out this backing paper. You really don't need it once you get all your decals off. And then I'll flip everybody over so you can see everything that we have. You can see how bright and beautiful that these printed. This paper is one of my favorite um, water slide papers. It's easy to work with. It prints really nice. It cuts really nice. You can see how nice and detailed everything is. And I think it looks really good. So we're going to take these Arendelle decals, these water slide these water slide decals and we are going to apply them to this mug. I'm going to put one on either side and then I'm going to show you guys how to seal them. So these ones I'll usually just stick in a little box or drawer just to save because like I said I don't like to waste my paper so if I can cut out some extra little water slides that I can use later I do that. The next step is to soak our decal so I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and put that one in first. It's going to curl a little bit. Don't worry it will uncurl itself. You want to soak them for about 30 to 60 seconds in room temperature water. Um, this water was literally just tap water. You don't have to do anything special to it. Really, 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 really easy. What you're watching for is for the decal to be ready to slide off of the paper. The more you do this, the more you'll kind of get used to seeing when the decal is ready to come off of the paper. You'll start to see it lifting on the edges and you'll be able to easily slide it around off of the backing. This one's not quite ready yet. We should be good to go now. Looks like it's sliding better. Let's check. Yep, we are sliding. So I keep my hand wet to do this. And what I'm going to do is place my decal where I want it onto my mug. Now you can do this anywhere that you want on your mug. I want to try to get mine onto this little section here. So what I want to do now is gently slide the paper out from under the decal. Just gently, very, very gently. And it's going to slide a little bit. That's okay. Don't worry. We can reposition it for a little while so you can kind of get it wherever you want it to go. And again, this is why you want a wet finger to do this because you don't want dry hands on this. If you have a dry hand on this, it can cause it to rip. So you'll want to be gentle. And I'm just making sure that all the wrinkles and the bubbles are out of it using my finger and kind of holding it against the light to take a look. That looks good. I think we're good. So I'm going to let this one dry by itself pretty naturally. And I actually think I need to slide it just a hair that way. I think it's good. Whoops. And then I slid it too far. There we go. That's good. So you can do the next side as well. But this one we're going to need to be a little more careful with because we have the other side already done. So again, just drop it right into that water and let that sit for just a few minutes. You're going to let this sit again for about 30 to 60 seconds until it's ready to uh, slide off of the paper. Again, we're going to check this one now that's soaked for a little while and just see if it's ready to slide off of its backing. It looks like it is. So I'm going to grab my cup. And again, remember, we need to be gentle because we have one on the other side. So for this one, it's probably going to be harder for you guys to see because I'm going to have to be really careful not to set it onto the um, table here. But I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing where I'm going to slide the backing out from behind my decal. Now you'll want to read your directions on different types of paper if you're not using the haze because they will be different. This one does get laid down this direction. Some of them do require mirroring. I like this one because I don't have to try to mirror anything. All right, I think that looks pretty good, pretty even. And see, this is why I said I had to be careful. I bumped this one with my hand, but that's okay because you can fix it. So don't fret if something happens in the meantime. Just gentle, 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 
and just kind of gentle with the mug until you're happy with where it is. I think that's pretty good. This one's sitting a little high, so see how I'm turning it sideways? I'm just going to pull this one down a little bit so that it's more even with where that one is sitting. And I think we are good to go. So now what I need to do is I'm going to take this and I don't really, my oven, I'm not going to show you guys my oven, but all you'll need to do is we're going to take this over to our oven. We're going to set it for 230 degrees Fahrenheit or 110 Celsius. So if you're in Canada, Celsius, um, or any of the other countries that use the metric system. And then we're going to bake this for 15 minutes, take it out of the oven, allow it to cool, and it will be good to go. But look how cute. That come out good. So I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my oven and get it baked. Here is our finished mug. This is a really, really fun craft that you can do with or without a Cricut. If you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. And don't forget that you can save 15% at Hayes Paper with the link down below and code Corinne. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. You learned a lot and happy crafting. Oh,